أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله My brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all I praise Allah, the Lord of the universe, the master of the day of judgment. And I remind us all that it is Allah alone that we worship and it is Allah alone we ask for help. I thank him and praise him for all the good things that he has given all of us. You, me and my family and everybody else around. Alhamdulillah. We thank him every day, every minute of our living. My brothers and sisters, on this very blessed day, I hope and I pray you and your family are well. And you are staying together and you are staying put. Don't be... Disheartened by the fact that our masajids are still closed in some, um, some, of, some of our masajids are still closed and some of them are opening slowly, but cautiously because of the pandemic. And we have to be very careful not to overstep the mark and cause more trouble than it is worth. So be patient. Even we have such teachings in our faith, some of us forget and become impatient about it. Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا وَالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ and stay steadfast using prayer and patience. So brothers and sisters, prayers and patience, they go hand in hand. Today, I want to talk about this amazing verse where Allah says, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب وله وزينة وتفاخر تفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجاب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور This is in Surah 57 verse number 20 where Allah says that the life of this world is but a play and a passing delight and a beautiful show and the cause of your boastful vying with one another and of your greed for more and more riches and children. Its likeness is that of rain. When it produces vegeta vegetation, it delights the tiller. But when it withers and you see it turn yellow, and then it crumbles into dust. But the abiding truth of man's condition will fully become apparent in the life to come. Either suffering severe or Allah's forgiveness and his goodly acceptance for the life of this world is nothing but an enjoyment of self-delusion. The above verse cannot be understood alone, my brothers and sisters. You need to ask yourself some serious questions. Questions such as, why am I here? What am I doing on this earth? Why do I live only to die? What's my purpose? What is really the purpose of my life? Such questions has bothered many people. Scientists, philosophers, people of knowledge and no knowledge, wise people and ordinary people, all have wondered, why am I here? Why have I cre been created in the first place? And why am I living only to die? Those questions can only be understood if we have true faith in the words of Allah. For Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created human beings on this earth for anything but to worship me. In Surah 38 verse 27 he says, We have not created heavens and the earth and all that's between them without meaning and purpose. Life is not about wasting your time or amusement, my brothers and sisters. There is a purpose. There is a reason why you exist. Allah says in the Quran in Surah 23 verse 115, do you think that we have created you in mere idle play? But whereas life in itself is a positive gift of Allah, and as one of the great scholars point out, the potential source of all blessings. It loses this positivity or positive quality if it is indulged in recklessness, in blindly and with regard, with disregard of spiritual values and consideration. In brief, it is indulged in without any thought of the hereafter. This life becomes useless 
If you just indulge without really thinking about your purpose and your destination. I want to tell you a story. Once a man was jung- running through a jung- walking through a jungle, he suddenly realized that he's being stalked by a lion. He decided to run. He was extremely afraid that the lion will get him any time. After a short sprint, he realized there is no hope in heaven that he will survive. So he was praying very hard. He was looking for an escape. He was looking for something to protect him. He was looking for something that will hold him or at least prevent the lion from attacking him. As he was running faster and faster, he suddenly saw a water well. And in that water well, he looked down and he could see the depth of it. Darkness and fear overwhelmed him. When he got closer to the water well and he looked down and he saw there was no water at the bottom of the water well, he decided, I must protect my life. He had a lion behind him and a dry water well in front of him. He closed his eyes and jumped. As he was falling down the, down the water well, he saw a rope dangling from the side of the water well. He grabbed it with all his might with a mighty grab he was successful and was able to dangle from the rope in the middle of the water well while in that position he looked up and he saw a lion looking at him waiting for him to come up so that the lion could have its meal he looked down and he saw the pit of the water well but at the bottom of it he saw a huge snake The snake was looking up, waiting for him to fall so he could also have his meal. He realized he is in double trouble. There was a lion waiting outside and there was a snake waiting inside. As he was hanging from the rope, he also noticed two rats, a white rat and a dark rat, eating away the rope that is dangling from the water well and on which he was dependent and his life dependent on. And as the rats were eating away the rope, it was becoming weaker by the day, by the second. He was utterly helpless, unable to decide what to do. He could see his life ticking away right in front of his own eyes. My brothers and sisters, in such a precarious state he was almost giving up then he saw a beehive right next to him with bees buzzing around it on the wall bees had nested and it created a massive hive and he could see from the beehive sweet honey dripping down he couldn't resist he couldn't resist the temptation even though he was dangling from a rope that is about to snap. He reached out for the honey. He pushed his finger in the hive, soaking and dripping from the fresh, sweet honey of the beehive. He devoured every last bit of honey he could. He forgot about his imminent danger. He forgot about the danger of the lion that is waiting outside to eat him any time, any minute. And he forgot about the fact that there is a snake at the bottom also waiting to eat him. And he forgot that he was dangling from a rope that was about to snap because rats are eating from the rope and making the threads become weaker and weaker and weaker. As he devoured the honey, for a moment he forgot He was in serious danger, thus placing himself at a greater risk. My brothers and sisters, the moral of the story is very simple. The lion in this story represents our death, which is constantly chasing us and waiting for us, and waiting for the moment when it can strike. Your life has no certainty, but your death is definite. You do not know when you will die, but you shall certainly taste death. Many of us try to escape death by investing in this world and attempting to fortify our path, our homes, our 
fortresses are made of strong materials our physique and our wealth are all protected in pursuit of materialistic pleasures and fortification of life is all about materialism yet my brothers and sisters when death comes we will not be able to carry anything over to the other side I know a gentleman who is multimillionaire he owned many many companies and he had money pouring out of his ears as they say in a, in a metaphorical way he was struck with coronavirus infection he was taken to hospital all the managing directors of each and every company lined up in front of the hospital pouring all the company's money to make sure that he does not die all the doctors even foreign doctors were flown into his hospital bedside the best around the world nothing could prevent him from dying all that money and power nothing could prevent him from dying my brothers and sisters um al hayatu dunya illa mata'u al ghurur life of this world is nothing but a self delusion an amusement that is delusion that's what we learn from this story that you could be dangling from a rope your death could be imminent and yet you'd forget that there is death looming and you will certainly die we forget we invest all in our worldly material or all our worldly power and possession and forget the certainty of life and that is death when you lose sight of life's inevitable journey the inevitable inevit- inevitability the inevit- inability I can't even pronounce the word in avoidable unavoidable reality you behave like that man when death was staring at his face he was busy devouring the sweetness of the honey we become like that kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut allah says every human being will and shall taste death we forget to remember that death is waiting for all of us because we are too busy tasting life we forget to remember death is waiting for us and we shall taste it because we are too busy devouring the honey and the sweetness of life um al hayatu ad dunya illa mata'u al ghurur life of this world is nothing but an amusement a delusion my brothers and sisters more lesson that we learn from this story number 2 there are so many honey traps in this world that we often forget and we forget the reality of death because those honey traps are so attractive and so alluring lures us away from remembering that where we will go one day and we'll have to be accountable for our deeds no matter how big or small the deed was faman ya'mal mithqala dharratin khayran yara وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّ يَرَى Whether your act weight was, whether your action, your deeds were smaller than an atom weight or it was even smaller, good or bad, you shall see it. Allah will make it apparent on the Day of Judgment and we will be questioned about it. My brothers and sisters, allure of fame, fortune and power is often intoxicating. It is the potential to take everybody. People kill for money people kill for power people kill for fame people do all sorts of things to have this under their belt you ask our young people of 21st century world what would they like to see in their life most often they say they want to become famous like the footballers often they say they would like to become rich remember my brothers and sisters don't teach your children to become rich teach your children to become successful in the hereafter not just pursuing money but investing in the hereafter teaching our children to become successful is not becoming famous or powerful teaching our children to become successful means to have moral compass in their life to have presence of allah in their conscience to have sound character in their behavior that's when they're successful no matter how rich they are what car they drive 
what house they live in, how much money they have in their bank account. It will come to no avail, my brothers and sisters. What will come to fruition for us on this earth and in the hereafter is how we become successful spiritually, morally, and in our character. How close we are to Allah. In akramakum, عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The best in the eyes of Allah, the best in the eyes of Allah are those who are the most Allah conscious and those who have the best of character. Lesson number three in this story that I narrated to you earlier is this. Snake represents the grave which patiently awaits all of us, my brothers and sisters. It awaits our arrival. Biggest folly of humanity is that they see and they bury so many people who die around them. They go and visit those graves, but they leave the grave and they forget. This is the end destination for all of us. A small trench measuring six feet deep, eight feet long and two feet wide. Remember, six feet deep, eight feet long and two feet wide. That's the maximum you can ever get for a grave, for a place where you will rest until the Day of Judgment. And that we should not forget. In that story, snake represents the grave that, it, that is awaiting all of us. A grave that is not made of beddings or heatings or lightings. It has no bed, no radiators, no lighting, no running water, nothing. Ba'ath, minha khalaqnakum, wa fiha nu'idukum, wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. It is from this soil that we have come. And it is to this soil we shall return. And it is from this soil we will raise again. Allah Azza wa says that in the Quran. Minha khalaqnakum. From it we have made you. Wa fiha nu'idukum. And to it we shall return you. Wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. And from it we shall raise you again. He's talking about the Day of Judgment here. My brothers and sisters, there would be nothing in our grave except our body and our deeds. There would be no help and support. Our grave will not be weathertight. Rainwater would flood it often. Earth around us would freeze. And the temperature would drop. Creely, creepy, crawly animals would all come out into our graves, eat away at our core. And what happens after that is all nothing but history. The body becomes part and parcel of the earth, devoured by worms, maggots and other animals. Devoured by earthly creatures for us to only become part of the nature, part of the earth, returned to it, decomposed within it, disappeared right at the thick of it. My brothers and sisters, that's going to be our grave. This is your body's permanent resting space, decomposed and fused together to this earth and its core. When we buy a house, we go to see it, not only once, but several times. We inspect it, we get reports. We make sure our loved ones like it. We like seeing it again and again and again and again until we get the possession of it. And when we get the keys, we look at it again, we improve it, we spend money on it, we make our house comfortable. Those homes that we so much invest our money in are temporary homes, my brothers and sisters. They're not permanent homes, they're temporary. And yet we invest so much in it. What about the permanent home that awaits all of us, call our grave? What about investment in our hereafter? What about preparation for the journey to come to your grave, to our graves? Life of this world is nothing but self-delusion. If you're deluded, you will not realize that life is passing you by. And you have not made the best of it. Grave is waiting you. And you have not prepared for it. That's what we call self-delusion. Point number three. In that story, rope is our life. On which our survival depends. We build our lives by accumulating wealth. Working hard. Having families including spouse and children. And establishing friends all around us with the hope that they will give us joy and pleasure and company and all the good things that we like in this world. This hope is like a rope, my brothers and sisters. It binds us to the lure of this life and the pleasures of this world. It extends from when we had nothing to when we have great heights.
sense of achievement, success and progress. It runs through our life like air runs through our lungs. The tighter we tie the knot of life with the rope, the more secure we feel. Some of us extend our lives ropes to reach as many ventures and adventures as possible. And some of us keep our rope short and close to our chest. Rope offers a sense of security and stability, but this rope may not be able to cope with all the material and worldly wealth you have accumulated and you have been dangling from it. The weight of it will, each and every fiber will be compromised and will snap like the rats. Life's journey will eat away on your rope and that rope will eventually snap. Your overweight body, your sh your shed load of unused extras, your cupboard full of clothes, bank full of money, car in your drive, wealth of this world, are all but junk that will weigh down on that rope and that rope will eventually snap because that rope can't cope with your weighty life and the lures of this world. Life of this world is nothing but a self-delusion. My brothers and sisters, can you cope with that knowledge that your rope will not be able to cope with the baggage of life? But yes, this rope that you have is not just temporary. It is weak. It snaps. It will rot away eventually. It is an illusion of reality if you are hanging from that rope thinking that's it I am fine it's a temporary leash it is like an emergency tire on your car after an accident you can only go so far you can't drive on it permanently point number four from that story the white rats and the dark rats represents day and night in our life Passing of the day and the night reflects the reduction of our life on a daily basis, taking us closer and closer to our death and our grave. Have you ever asked yourself, my brothers and sisters, what is eating your rope? What are your dark and white matters? You may be young now, but as days and nights pass, they eat away on your life's rope called the age. You get older, weaker and frail. You may be healthy now, but there will come a time when you may not be as strong as right now. You will become weak. You may be healthy right now, but there will come a time when you will not be as healthy. You may be rich now, but there will come a time when you will not have enough money. What you have now may be looking abundant, but there will come a time when you will not be able to find anything. Remember, with each passing day, the rope of your life has lost one more fibre that is holding it together. Each passing day, each passing night, one more day has passed away from your life. One more fiber on your life's rope on which you are dangling has just snapped. One more fiber. Eventually, all of them will snap. Point number five. The honey in the beehive represents the lure of the world. We get distracted by glitz and glitter, sweetness and loving spouse, children, families, friends, wealth, property, all the rest of the amazing things that give us joy, an illusion of joy, my brothers and sisters. We smell power, we smell fortune, we smell fame. The sweet smell of temptation of this world is hypnotizing, addictive and infectious. We always want more and more Prophet ﷺ said, if you give a valley of gold to children of Adam, it won't be enough. He or she would want another valley. When we taste it, we forget the reality of life. We forget the certainty of death. We forget we're here only for a fixed time. And that time will disappear. Wealth of this world. Children, spouse, friends. All of these are like that lure of the honey bee that that man saw while dangling from a very precarious rope with lion on top and a snake at the bottom of the water well 
Such is your life that you dangle, but you are attracted by the lures of this world. You love money, you love wealth, you love property, you love glitz and glamour, you love fame and fortune, you love power. You're intoxicated, you don't mind being corrupt, you don't mind building the rules, you don't mind being unethical to earn a little bit of living, you don't mind because you've forgotten the reality of life. Life of this world is nothing but a delusion, a self-delusion. You forget because you've been intoxicated, distracted, taken away from the focus. Why did you come here? What was your purpose? Did you come here only to waste your time and your life? My brothers and sisters, we get seduced by the sweetness of power. We get seduced by the sweetness of fame. We get seduced by the sweetness of fortune. Even the scholars fall into this trap. Even the scholars fall into the trap of fame. Have you not heard the celebrity shakes nowadays shaking the world in a very unethical manner? Have you not heard the celebrity this and celebrity that who has been using Islam to promote their own brand suddenly have fallen from the height of achievement on a massive fall on their backside on the ground? My brothers and sisters, the scholars, even them, could be lured into the temptations, temptations of this world. The knowledge and training should be a power to fight the lures of this world. But success is dependent on Allah. Some succeed, succeed and some fail. So I want to finish off my reminder by reminding you the verse of the Quran that I read earlier on to you. اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهم وزينة وتفاخر وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل أعجاب الكفار كمثل غيث أعجاب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور and know that the life of this world is but a play and passing delight and a beautiful show and the cause for your boastful vying with one another and of your greed for more and more richness in children its likeness is that of rain its likeness is that of rain when it produces vegetation it delights the tiller but when it withers and you see it turn yellow and it crumbles unto dust but the abiding truth of man's condition will become truly apparent and fully apparent in the da in the life to come either through suffering severe or allah's forgiveness and his goodly acceptance for the life of this world is nothing but an enjoyment of self-delusion question for you my brothers and sisters what is keeping you away from realizing the true meaning and purpose of your life self-delusion lure of this world money property children fame fortune family what is keeping you away let me ask you a final question how many cars can you ride at any one time the answer is one how many beds can you sleep in at any one time only one how many toilets can you use at any one time only one how many bowls of rice or pasta or how many loaves of bread or paratha or roti as whatever you eat can you eat at any one time no more than a handful my brothers and sisters how much do you need to be happy how much do you need to be happy how many swimming pools can you sleep at any one time how many boats can you ride how many yachts can you possess how many planes can you be flying at any one time only one only one only one is the answer for each and every one of those questions how much do you need to be happy life of this world is nothing but a self-delusion so if you focus on material you'll be stung you'll be disappointed if you focus on spiritual growth if you focus on your personality on your character if you focus on the service that you provide to humanity if you focus on your compassion and your kindness and your love and mercy for others you'll be successful in this world and you'll be successful in the hereafter so don't be deluded by the glitz and the glitter the pomps and ceremonies that you see around you don't be deluded by 
The desire to have more and more, for your desire to have more and more will never end unless you tame it. I hope and I pray you can tame it. I hope and I pray that you are able to protect yourself. And we make dua, Allah gives us the best of this world and the hereafter. Ya Arhamur Rahimeen, protect us Ya Allah. Forgive us Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimeen, enable us so that we can focus on achieving your pleasure. So that we can focus on investment of the hereafter. And we can take our minds away from the lures of this world. But use this world as a stepping stone for the hereafter, for the success of the hereafter, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimeen, protect our children, Ya Allah. Protect our brothers and sisters in all parts of the world, Ya Allah. Protect this humanity, Ya Allah, from this terrible pandemic that has taken us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judham wa min sayr asqam. Ya Allah, protect us from this terrible disease, Ya Rabb. Ya Allah, protect our communities from ter this terrible disease, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, restore on this earth peace and stability, Ya Allah. And make our world fairer, more equitable, more friendly place for all humanities, Ya Allah. Rabbana taqabal minna inna ka anta samil alim. Utub alayna ya maulana inna ka anta tawab al-rahim. My brothers and sisters, I would like to finish here. But before I finish, I've got a few announcements to make. Announcement number one, this masjid, inshallah, our masajid will open. Keep your eyes open. Listen to the adverts, announcements that the mosque committees are making. And that's only when you should be able to attend the masajids. When you want to attend the masajids, you'll have to make an appointment, book your place. Because space are limited. Only a number of people can be allowed in the masjid. So book it first. And when you come to the masjid, please make sure you wear a protective mask. You have used hand sanitizers, wearing gloves, you're wearing socks, carrying your own musalla and carrying a bag to put your, bag, put your shoes in. So you can pray in the masjid with your social distance that the masajids have implemented by assigning space and pray and leave immediately afterwards. Go home and pray your sunnah and your nawafil and your extra prayers and donate to this masajid so that they can continue providing the service. That's an announcement number one. Announcement number two, if you've got children in the, in the summer holidays for the whole month of August, inshallah, from the 3rd of August until the 20th of August, we'll be, we'll be providing children's Islamic summer school where they will learn Quran, they will learn the stories of the prophets, they will learn life skills, they will be able to change their life and their character, inshallah. So please go to barefootinstitute.com's website, barefoot as in no shoes, Barefoot Institute. It's website, barefootinstitute.com's website, and you can find the details to book for your children. You can find the details for this particular program on the Whiteman Road Message website too. We're doing it together. And if you are an adult and you want to do a bit more studies in the holiday period, I'll be teaching Quran, a journey through the Quran called 30 Rules of Life again, inshallah, starting from August as well. And it'll be every Wednesdays and Thursdays and you'll find the details of the particular program on our website, barefootinstitute.com. You'll find the website giving you details. And the third announcement, if you're a couple and if you want to enhance your relationship or you've, you're struggling because of COVID-19, you've been together on each other's face too often and you want to be able to create space and grow and become a couple again, or you are struggling because of no space or in-laws around, children around, this is the program for you. You and your spouse can come and learn Again, find the details on our website. It's for the weekend, first weekend of August, only two hours each day. And it is very easy for you to book. Go to Barefoot Institute's website and book, inshallah. With these words, I'll finish. May Allah bless you and protect you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.